Welcome to another episode of the Reboot Chronicles, a no holds barred forum with global leaders, authors, entrepreneurs, and CEOs about how organizations stay focused on growth and innovation in unprecedented times. I'm your host, Dean DeBias, coming to you live from Revive's North American headquarters in Chicago, and we would like to thank you for joining us from around the globe today. I'd like to welcome David McKillops to the Reboot Chronicles. He is the CEO of CEC Entertainment, the globally recognized leader in entertainment and dining, which has seen its fair share of reboots since it was founded in Silicon Valley way back in the 70s. Under David's leadership, the company operates a system of family destinations, including Chuck E. Cheese, Basquelli's, Peter Piper Pizza, and some other things we'll hear about today, with hundreds of locations that employ over around 13,000 people. Um, you know, this industry includes a lot of players. It's projected to be over a $40 billion market by 2027, and the company is investing rapidly in expanding its brands and venues around the globe. So we're going to get into that today. David, it's good to see you. Great to be here. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, looks like you got your buddies in the background there. For those of you that are watching on uh, a video, you can see Chuck E. Cheese right there in the background. One of my old favorites. That's the original. Charles Entertainment That is the original. Cheese. Oh, my gosh. I'm getting flashbacks here, which we'll talk about the nostalgia part of your brand, which I think is so important. Um, the uh, So back in the day, I was running a uh, Silicon Valley uh, <laughs> a games company. I knew uh, Nolan Bushnell pretty well. We lived close to each other. And... Uh, you know, one of the founders of Atari, and uh, back in the uh, '70s, he actually, you know, bought this and took took this concept and and took it on the road. It's amazing, amazing story in the history is 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 uh, something as well. And most people don't know you're really kind of like a gaming company uh, designed or uh, or disguised, I should say, as a as a restaurant uh, venue almost. At least that's how I've always looked at it. You you are right. It is entertainment led. In fact, Chuck E. Cheese is the largest arcade in the world with 2 billion game plays each and every year. Wow. That's uh that is, that's amazing. And, um, you know, in terms of your, your tenure, you came in at a very, uh, really tough time. The beginning of 2020, as many know, was just as uh, the world was diving into a pandemic and, you know, a lot of companies didn't have to worry about too much, close a couple of offices. You had the most touchy feely in your face, you know, kids and moms in facilities. Uh, did you have to just stop everything? Maybe give us a, a quick uh, a quick tour of how your responsive journey was as soon as you got up there. You know, we, we did. I joined January 2020 and I was just thrilled to be here. In fact, it was my first time CEO. I'd been in the entertainment business for about 25 years. So I, I joined in January with uh, a full head of, of new ideas and innovation and things that I thought we were gonna be able to execute right. by yep. March. We were closing every single door because of COVID. And by the end of June, unfortunately, the balance sheet just couldn't support being closed uh, operationally. And we had to file uh, for a debt restructuring on Chapter 11 in June, which we ultimately were successful in terms of emerging by the end of the year. And now we've set ourselves up for the, you know, the new chapter here at Chuck E. Cheese. But it was, it was tumultuous. It was really, really challenging. But we have a great team here, great leadership on on the ground as well as at the corporate level. But there's no doubt it was it was a challenging time. For yeah, the your theme park experience obviously kicked in there as well as a nice move on the financial uh, uh, restructuring too, because um, not everyone could have pulled that off. Um, for those of you that have been through it in the business audience here, it's uh, to move that quickly and save a company is 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 re it's remarkable. I mean, it's why you're on the reboot chronicles, quite frankly. Some people are calling this the renaissance moment for CEC entertainment. Um, can you kind of dig in and uh, just tell us how you've been rebooting the company? Absolutely. So, yeah, when we started reopening after post or post COVID in 2021, we set ourselves up with a strategy of six areas of growth for the company. But the first and most important was to invest back in the business. And Chuck E. Cheese is a 44-year-old brand. It has a lot of nostalgia. Every single guest, uh, young or old, has some type of a relationship with the brand. And it could have been their first birthday party. It could have been an after-school event. It could have been a mom or dad weekend out. And it was somebody always has a relationship with this great brand through generations. And, you know, as I looked at Chuck E. Cheese, it's how are we going to relate to a new generation of kids? who are powered by the small screen, the big screen and video games. And, and how do we combine the moments for 
parents and kids to play together. And we thought it was really interesting. We went through a, a deep dive in terms of how do we remodel the Chuck E. Cheese experience. And we came out with ultimately a beautiful design. We uh, are replacing some of the, you know, the, the dated look and feel with an updated technologically forward design that has interactive dance floors, a big jumbotron, a TV network, all new games, amenities for you know, mom and dad, simple things of, of putting power at every single one of the, uh, at, at the tables, doing pickup windows that are driven by mobile ordering. Um, you know, those, those are the kind of things that, that we looked at. And then ultimately, we had to make some decisions while we were closed of how do we advance the operation? And one of those things is we moved from the old paper tickets mm -hmm. to an e-ticket system. And boy, I, I heard a lot from the people the nostalgic love those paper that, tickets. Oh, oh, like, oh, it's credibility it. on it, the floor. You, yes. Oh, it was it was unbelievable. But at the end of the day, mom is our core customer, right? Right. Because right? the kids will ask on average nine times, "Hey, I want to go to Chuck E. Cheese," and mom has to drive, you know, the five, six, seven year old to Chuck E. Cheese, and. You spend a couple hours at Chucky, you're having a great time, but it is an energetic experience. The the noise and the music and the lights and the action, it's it's a lot over a couple hours. So for us to go to mom and say, you're going to be able to, when you're ready to go, put your jacket on, put your hat on, go pick a prize and leave without spending 20 minutes at the ticket right. muncher. She was she was pretty happy. So that was that was innovative. It made us greener, it made us cleaner. And it was something that has paid off financially as well. I love how you've done that because two things, as I travel around the world, so this is not just a knock on American kids, but, you know, I'm holding up my phone, those of you not on video. It's like everyone is staring at their screens in restaurants, let's just say. So entertainment venues similar to yours, mostly the kids. And it's like the, you know, the entertainment. So you are the place where they can still be interactive with each other. You know, granted, the, sometimes the parents are just watching, but it's... But you've also kind of gravitated, say, hey, let's not fight the phone. Let's leverage it and use it as a fulfillment device, use it as the interaction device. Does it also kind of take the journey home with them so you can kind of keep in touch with them? Have you thought through all of that? We, we can. We launched a, a new loyalty club Smart. Uh, last yeah. year. We have roughly about a million and a half members right now. It allows us to keep in touch, and we use this as a springboard for uh, promotion around our four seasons events, including our big summer pass and all the deliverables and, uh, and benefits are on your, your loyalty pass. We're also gating a lot of our, our offers. You know, Chuck E. Cheese for years had been coupon driven. And now we have brought those coupons into a gated environment, rewarding our loyalty, our most loyal members to get those. In exchange to having some of their personal information, it allows us to start a one-on-one -on -one relationship with our guests. Yeah, it makes sense. And retailers are doing that more and more. So I'll get certain perks and things that uh, maybe others don't, depending on how much uh, my kids are obsessed with the, the platform, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. And the and talk about the gaming side of this. I mean, you are a, you know, this show we talk a lot about innovation, co-creation, partnerships. So this is where I'm going with it. But, you know, the whole gaming side, that platform play, what kind of opportunities do you have seeing there in terms of your your you know, your roadmap and your growth trajectory and what you can do next. Sure. So gaming is ultimately the heart and soul of Chuck E. Cheese, right? It's about entertainment. It's about the music. It's about, you know, formerly it was about the animatronics. Now it's about the interactive play between the dance floor and the jumbotron and the music and the partnerships we're bringing. But every Chuck E. Cheese is dominant with uh, a gaming area. And, uh, our games are specifically made for our young demographic. And we were talking about putting your phone down when you when you come to a mm -hmm. restaurant. You know, at the end of the day, we're not a restaurant. We serve great pizza. We've got great prizes. Uh, we act and we, we look and we smell like a restaurant. But at the end of the day, we're, we're an entertainment venue. The majority of our, our dollars that are generated uh, for the company all come from gaming. And we take it really seriously. It's about participatory right. play. So it's about parents right. and kids playing together. And we have games, some of the traditional ones like ski ball or basketball shoot, but then we've got some others and we really lean into the experience of how to create two player and four player games. So when families come together, they play together. And that is that. that is so important to our right. brand. And then we also work with the manufacturers to make sure our counters are a little bit lower. 
So if you think about a five or a six right. year old and they go to a traditional arcade for teenagers, well, they're they're trying to look at the they're trying to look at the screen and they can barely get to the joystick. You know, for us, it's all built through the eyes of a five, six and seven year old. So that's great. And it is super, super important. We've got games uh, really in three sections uh, in, in the arcade floor. So we've got our our skill games. Uh, and our, which are skill and sport mm-hmm. games. And then we've got our traditional arcade games. And then we also have a section that is built for our, our younger uh, audience. And those are, you know, rides and more preschool uh, locations. And that's kind of set aside. Um, so they're not, you know, really, uh, you know, in conflict with some of the older kids that are kind of run around Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. So the days of the uh, plastic ball pit, what do they call those? The ball pit, I guess. The the ball pits. We have no ball pits anymore. No. We have no sky crawls. It's <laughs> those really went away with COVID. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about your other uh, brands? Uh, you know, Peter Piper Pizza. Tough one to say. Um, and uh, it, Pasquale's and others. Um, what, what's uh, well, we'll, t- we'll talk about Pasquale's first because it's really it's an I- interesting story, and it yeah. was really uh, you know COVID helped birth the Pasquale story. Smart. And you know, as we as we were shutting down. Uh, we were looking at, you know, how are we going to keep this, you know, this brand going? There are two things we looked at. Number one, the in-home entertainment experience for Chuck E. Cheese. So we were able to deliver uh, home a birthday party with pizza, with a cake, and send our prizes home. And then also you could link into our YouTube channel and still get that Chuck E. Cheese experience. Now, it's not the same to come to Chuck E. Cheese, but during COVID, we all looked at how are we going to survive? The other opportunity is Chuck E. Cheese has incredible pizza. The 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 profile of the pizza, the crust, uh, you know, it's everything is homemade from the from the dough. We're slicing the ingredients. We've got this just great pizza, but we don't get credit for it all the time because really our credit is given for our entertainment right. value. So we worked with our chefs and said, you know, what if we looked at altering the recipe a little bit so it meets a little bit more of a mature taste. And we added two different types of cheeses and Italian seasonings. And we've, you know, we've got the crust and already in house. And then we looked at a brand that we could tap to bring to a new, new uh, customer segment. And we already had this great character named Pasquale. And he's part of Mr. Munch's make-believe brand. He's the uh. chef. And he's originally, and, and, you know, the story goes, he's from Naples. He's from Italy. And, you know, he's, and he creates this great pizza. We said, you know what, let's take this, this brand name Pasquale's. And let's bring it to a virtual kitchen. And, you know, we did that. It was brand new for the industry. And, you know, we got a lot of learnings on that. Still going strong today. Uh, And we've got, um, you know, really a a wonderful positioning. It's all about flavor up. And we really lean into the flavors of wings and pizza. And uh, that's our virtual kitchen, Pasquale. So we're looking for continued innovation. Many other companies have followed in our footsteps. Sometimes it's challenging to be the first one out because you get a lot of learnings, especially from, you know, consumers just trying to understand, you know, how did I get Pasquale's from a Chuck E. Cheese location? How did that work? You know, that was all brand new when we launched this brand. And now it's matured and there's just great virtual brands out there as well. And we're going we're gonna to continue down that path. Yeah. And I like the way you call it virtual kitchens instead of ghost kitchens, which everyone calls them. <laughs> yeah. Other restaurant, uh, the big chains uh, did that as well, but it seems like you've turned that into a nice, uh, a nice mix. Speaking of uh, Pasquale and Absolutely. Naples, uh, Italy, um, I think I have a uncle Pasquale over there myself. Um, let's talk about, <laughs> I'm not kidding. Let's talk about international. Um, you know, you're, you're expanding your team, you're expanding your footprint. This to me seems like you know, you come out of the theme park space, you know, Disney is part of your, uh, part of your, your total addressable market for gosh sakes. And they have been really good in, in exporting the, the pizzazz and the, uh, the, um, you know, the, the, the famous brands that they have. And it seems like you've got the same opportunities with, um, with a lot of the, you know, the, the brands and the sub brands you've got in your uh, portfolio here. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm really excited about our international expansion. We have 86 locations open today in 17 countries and territories worldwide. We've got a wonderful pipeline uh, of new stores and new opportunities that we're going to be entering into uh, territories. We've got about 40 locations in the Middle East and about 40 locations in, in uh, South America as well. So great partners in Chile and Peru, Colombia, Mexico, and then we're in Saudi 
Uh, we opened up this year in Bahrain. We've got great news coming here in the next couple of weeks in Qatar. We'll be opening up in Doha. It was actually just there. Beautiful location. Uh, we're in Dubai. And then uh, we're looking for expansion all over the Middle East. Now, Chuck E. Cheese uh, um, internationally may look a little different than it does domestically. So when you expand a brand internationally, it gives you the opportunity to look at uh, you know, pushing your, your uh, boundaries a little bit. And I'll give you some great examples. Um, some of the Chuck E. Cheese that we have internationally are two floors. There's a, there's a, uh, you know, one floor for younger kids. There's an older floor for teenagers or, or older kids. We, we just debuted this year, a, a, like a 20 foot rock wall that you can climb up um, in the Middle East. It just looks fantastic. In Mexico, we have some of our locations that now include a trampoline park. So it just, it, it allows us to test the bandwidth of the brand internationally where we're coming into new markets and we're serving, you know, I guess that uh, can be, you know, much more wider where domestically we really live in the space of around three to three to 10, you know, kids, uh, you know, parents with kids, three to 10. Yeah. yeah and you haven't even t- touched on India and other countries that have billions of people. Um, so let's let's talk about that. You know, skewing up in terms of your age bracket. What do you think about things like esports? Huge market there. Um, you know, all electronic, of course, but uh, that's turned into a separate industry all to itself. See any see any overlaps or uh, potential there? there? There could be some. There could be some overlap, especially in the the entry level for kids getting into esports because they have such a fond. Uh, uh, such a fond relationship with Chuck E. Cheese as they're growing up. They come, uh, they come on average three times a year. It's a huge treat to play all the brand new arcade games. We've got all the new games, the biggest brands, and that parlays very nicely into esports. The competitive nature of yep. esports at the younger level is starting to grow as well. The professional esports uh, leagues. I'm not <laughs> sure if there's there's yeah. a direct crossover yet with uh, with Chuck E. But you know, as we look at kids getting into the sport, certainly that's something we could look yeah. at. Yeah, seems like it. So when I go to the UAE, and I think, um, you know, I know you've been spending a lot of time over there, it's going to be different. Similar, same brand, but very different type of uh, layout. Um, more, it seems like you've got more ability. What about bringing some of that cool stuff uh, back to the States as well? Well, there's there's things that we're always looking at, uh, testing and, and innovation. So what we love to do is test these in new international yep. markets, see how they work, and then we can bring those back domestically as well. As part of the remodeling process, this was very much a part of the learnings that we had over the last couple of years. That's how we ended up with this digital dance floor. It is fantastic. It interacts with the Jumbotron and the whole entertainment package that we have. And that is something that's not only helping fuel our four-wall experience, but it's helping us take the brand outside of the four walls as well. And that's you know, part of our strategic vision is introducing new licensing opportunities, entertainment opportunities, and we're really excited about that. And I always tell when I go on my town halls, my vision is to have every five-year-old fall asleep in their Chuck E. Cheese pajamas, wake up, have Chuck E. Cheese cereal, and then go down the street, down the street and see Chuck E. Cheese if you get good grades or you, you do your chores <laughs> at the house. Yeah. Speaking of kids, you've got something called Kid Check. Um, is there any, any like, uh, you guys kind of led the way in making sure it's a safe fun environment, usually more fun, but also safety. Um, anything new there? Well, safety is our highest priority. And, you know, uh, Chuck E. Cheese led the entire industry, in fact, still does with uh, the kid check experience. And that basically is you come together, you leave together. And, you know, we do a hand stamp on every single guest that comes in. And then we check that hand stamp for when you, you leave as well. That's just added reassurance to our our moms and our dads and our school groups that come and visit us just to make sure that the young demographic that's coming to visit us is, is part of a, a wonderfully safe environment. And that's something that we will continue to stand behind. And are you still doing a lot of community stuff? I, I used to be the uh, CEO of uh, entertainment.com, uh, the entertainment coupon books. You guys are a very big partner of ours. Um, and yeah. uh, we donated a lot of that money to schools. I know you guys were leading the way in school, at least in this country, school donations and stuff. What's uh, What's uh, what's the plan there? Anything new? The couple, there's a couple of things that we've done that are really interesting. Number one, we've got a, a, a big partnership with Autism Speaks, uh, which was nice. really important. That's you know a, a segment of our guest demographic that uh, we really cater to. Uh, we have a wonderful relationship with the community, 
And uh, in fact, you know, this Halloween, we are launching a sensory sensitive Halloween experience. We turn down the lights and the sound. We open it up exclusively for those uh, families with uh, kids who are autistic. We know that uh, we've got a great pathway into, um, uh, you know, the families that uh, really need us to be more sensitive. And we do this not only during Halloween, but really throughout Mm -hmm. the year. A couple other things that we're doing right now is an entire playground project. um, And that is super exciting. So we've done two of those this year, one out in Los Angeles and one here in Dallas, where we are going in and we are rebuilding the playground. It's Chuck E. Cheese branded. It's for young kids. And it's really, it's a wonderful thing that our team not only helps out with personally, our team is actually building this, but it's a wonderful community event where we're giving back and we're giving them something, uh, you know, to, that, that is important to their either their school or their, their park that they can play on. So, um, and then throughout the country, we've got 460 locations here in the United States and around the world. We do a, a day of giving where we're giving pizzas or entertainment value back. And those could be to first responders or schools in need. So we're very, very active in our communities. Yeah, it's brilliant. And what's going on competition wise? You know, people always think about, I don't know, Dave and Buster's, Fun City, all those brands that, um, uh, you know, struggled during the last few years, of course. But uh, do you see yourself, um, you know, in that $40 billion number, it's everything from Disney down to tiny little entertainment spots. But uh, how how do you see yourself positioning competitively going forward? Well, we, you know, we, we have a, a nice niche, but overall, the, what I call the entertainment category has been explosive in the last yeah. several years. And you've seen it in the world of sports with Top Golf doing a fantastic job. The, exactly. you know, the, the fastest growing sport, sport right now is pickleball. Uh, there's a great concept called Chicken and Pickle, which I believe is based out of Kansas City that is now expanding. And then uh, Putt Shack just uh, uh, made some announcements about their growth. So, there are, there are great concepts coming into the world of uh, entertainment and food. And I think it's great to see everyone grow and you know, allow guests to come out and experience this. Chuck E. Cheese, though, has this incredible niche because anybody can open up an arcade, but you can't open a Chuck E. Cheese. There's something wonderful about our brand that has been now four decades strong that combines entertainment Great food, great desserts, a place to celebrate the moments, not only birthdays, but those other special moments. And then we've got Chuck E. Cheese. And he is uh, an incredible, incredibly powerful character as part of the an overall experience. It's well known. Everyone has had an experience with them. That's why it's important that we're reinvesting back in the brand. It keeps our competitive advantage with Kid Check, with a wholesome environment. There is no other FEC that is as large as Chuck E. Cheese. So there'll be more arcades coming in. There's going to be more entertainment uh, concepts that continue to push and allow us to keep pushing our innovation as well. Yeah, I see no shortage of innovation opportunities. Um, how do you run that, that that innovation and partnership stuff? Do you have a couple of people that do it or do you, you jump in that on that yourself? It's, it's the it's You know, the fun. It's, it's part of our senior leadership. It's the fun, yeah, it's the you know, fun that's stuff. The fun, the fun, yeah. <laughs> It, it is. And we've got a great team here. We've got an, an innovation team out of our games group that is constantly talking to manufacturers and looking at trends in the industry of what can we bring into Chuck E. Cheese that's going to you know, meet our mantra and, and meet our mission and vision uh, to make sure that we've got a wholesome environment that looks at activity-based play, the hottest brands, and in a wholesome environment. So we're always looking at those things. And again, the output of that was this incredible digital dance floor, the new entertainment package that we brought forth, and really it, it keeps entertaining our guests. So that's that's a lot of fun, but we stay. We want to make sure that we stay within the lines of uh, our brand promise. So what do you think, um, if I wanted to open up, a, or one of our listeners wants to open up a franchise, what the, what's it take these days? Well, we don't have a lot of franchises at, at Chuck E. Cheese on a domestic level. Right. Our international uh, opportunities are all franchise right. based, and there are several countries and territories that we are looking for partners right now. So, you know, there's certainly there's a financial commitment, and we're looking for multi unit operators who've got a great vision. And it's a complicated business, right? It's not just a restaurant. It's a, it's a restaurant. It's a party, a birthday party, 
Uh, it's it's uh, a retail wall. So as you have merchandise, a part of that as well. And then it's entertainment with gaming. So you need a sophisticated franchise partner. We've got them all over the world right now. We are looking to expand. We've got our site set on Asia now. We think there's incredible opportunities for growth there. Uh, I mean, Southeast Asia, across China, Japan, Singapore would be fantastic. Yep. And of course, you talked about India and, and of course, Africa, where populations continue to grow in those particular areas. So we'd be well positioned for a you know, young brand there. And those are certainly conversations that we're having. <laughs> no, right I think now. it's smart. You need industrial grade operators who know how to scale this stuff because it's, 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 I think it's easier just to, to run a McDonald's uh, franchise, quite frankly. You've got a lot of moving parts here. In a good way. I like the business model. But, you know, that's especially, you know, for someone like me who used to run online games companies, I think the whole interactive part, how you can kind of break that that digital addiction thing, I think there's a movement there that probably could uh, use a little more exploration. It's like, how do you, you know. Um, and I'm seeing that almost in every country, this this. This uh, digital fatigue and the need to get more, I don't know, physical. I mean, some of your games are very electronic. I get it. But you do have to get up and move around, so that's good. What about, um, we'd love to hear uh, in our final moments, just you've been through some crazy stuff in your career. You've done some amazing things, and this is your first CEO gig. Um, thrown into the fire at a crazy time, a uh, tough time around the, around the globe and, and, and coming through. So. Two questions. Um, as a reboot story yourself, what what kind of you know tips can you kind of share with uh, audiences that here that are kind of looking to kind of follow in your footsteps? You know, their first CEO gig, for instance. Well, I'll tell you. I think the learnings that we had coming into not only uh, twenty twenty but building into twenty one and into twenty two was all about communication, and whether it's good bad or ugly, you got to get that communication down the line. We went into the, I, what I think, the, the scariest and the darkest time in this company where you're closing every single door and the general managers, you know, they didn't know if they were going to have a job the next day. There was so much negative news out there. There was so much uncertainty that we all went through during COVID, you know, and uh, in a pandemic that we didn't, you know, we didn't know anything about right. that. And you know, I immediately made a commitment to the team corporately and the team in the field that we are we're, we're just going to be transparent. And, you know, as, as we closed and then went into uh, the restructuring, you know, you just you had to be out front with that message. And uh, we, we did that. And the management team and, and myself, we were in the field. We were doing town halls. We were assuring that, you know, we believe in this brand and there are uh, financial resources for us through the bankruptcy that, that were going to help us achieve where we wanted to go. We we're going to get through this dark day and there's going to be the sun shining on the other side. And during that time, we made a commitment to our talent because we knew if we wiped out our talent, the, the startup would be so much more difficult. We retained almost all of our field general managers. We wow. paid them and we paid and we paid their a good percentage of their bonuses. What did well. they do all and that time? <laughs> They, well, we moved. We moved to selling pizzas to go. We moved to selling Pasquales. I mean, they, they were. So they were working you know, all it was, that. It was yeah. They they were working. They were working hard, and they were believing in the future of the company. And it was a promise I made to everybody. And it was something that we just rallied around. So when we came out of this and started reopening, we had our generals at every single one of our stores ready to go. Now we had to replace our bench because we lost a lot of our bench. So some of that muscle memory on the ground floor was lost, but. When you've got your GM there who believes in the, the mission, the vision of where we're going to go, well, we made it through everything. And it was just to, to now to go in the field. And our average tenure of our GMs is almost 12 years. And they're smiling yeah. and they're, they're seeing the remodeling. They're seeing the reinvestment. That was fantastic. So for me, it's, it was all about communication and retention of your talent. And look what you've done with the culture because of that. I mean, I could rattle off some companies that didn't do that whether they couldn't restructure their debt or whatever, they couldn't afford to. And they let a lot of the managers go. And there's others like you that kept them, at least kept the muscle memory with the managers who then had to retrain. So the whole reboot and restart was retraining then the, the frontline force who were brand new, but at least you had the, right. the mid-tier there. Brilliant. That was a brilliant strategy. I mean, 
but the lifelong lessons there is everything that was learned over the last three, three years about like getting rid of the layers of slow communications now is actually helping companies more and more. Some people like it. Some actually don't. They wish they could go back to the good old days. And I always tell them there, there aren't any. This is the new way to work and develop people and run a company. So great examples. David, I really want to thank you for joining us today. It's been a uh, it's been an absolute pleasure, and uh, we'd love to uh, follow you and see how this uh, this reboot continues. I see some pretty uh, pretty exciting days in your future. Well, I appreciate it. Please come visit us. You'll love to see the all new Chuck E. Cheese and okay. have Pasquale's delivered at home. And if you're in the Southwest U.S., come see us at Peter Piper Pizza yeah, as yeah. well. Come down sometime to corporate too. It's great. You've been listening to David McKillops, who is the CEO of CEC Entertainment. This is Dean Tobias with the Reboot Chronicles. We want to thank you for joining us today, and we will see you soon.